call to order the regular meeting for April 27th. First thing, a second on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, well, we're going to kind of deviate from our normal schedule uh, right now. We're going to turn the floor over to uh, Tom. Thank you. Uh, so we, we actually have a number of celebrating successes uh, that we're going to recognize today, but uh, I wanted to provide this report uh, because it will, be, it will uh, put the celebrating successes into context as opposed to doing the celebrating success, then they leave, and then we have the report later on and nobody uh, uh, connects the two. So uh, what we're talking about is, so non-performing lots are lots that don't pay assessments. And those include uh, lots that are uh, behind, uh, in arrears, or lots that are owned by the POA. So back in 2015, December 31st of 2015, out of approximately 39,000 lots, we had 8,035 that were non-performing. This represented a loss of approximately $1.5 million per year in lost assessment revenue. Uh, it was 20.6%, uh, which is, is actually from industry standard is not that bad. Uh, there are other communities that are that are worse. Since 2015, um, our collections team, our accounting team, and our legal team have consistently worked and uh, have lowered this from 20.6 percent down to 4.5 percent, which is outstanding. So we've gone from 8,035 lots that are non-performing down to 1,767. This is an improvement of 6,268 lots. So if you think about, um, we have staff members calling, working with property owners that are struggling, putting them on payment plans, um, selling lots through um, our online auctions, uh, doing foreclosures through uh, the county and so forth. And uh, so this has had a significant impact. Um, if you look at the roughly 6,300 additional lots that are now paying, that represents an annual increase in revenue of $1.2 million. Very significant. A couple of additional points of, uh, of interest. <coughs> Since December 31st of 2015 through March of this year, we've gone from 13,449 improved lots to 15,535. So that's an increase of 2,086. So you have 2,086 properties that are now, instead of paying $16 a month, they're paying $40 a month. So that's an additional $800,000 and some of those lots that are improved were purchased through the auctions that we did, either the foreclosures or the online auctions. So you, if you look at the $1.2 million and the $600,000, that's $1.8 million. So to put it in perspective, we recently had an assessment increase of $3. And if it were not for the efforts of this team, the increase would have needed to be $12 more to bring in the same amount of money. That's really impressive. Uh, one last uh, piece of anecdotal information, the number of unimproved lots owned by improved property owners, so that's, you know, I own my lot and I own the empty lot next to me. Um, Unfortunately, we only have this information from January of 17, so it doesn't go all the way back to 15 like the other one. But since 17, we've gone from, from 4,400 unimproved lots owned by neighbors, uh, neighboring improved lot owners, uh, to 6,977. So uh, that's been a, what a, what's the math on that? 2,500 
2,600 additional lots that are owned by improved property owners. So what this means is now 22,500 out of the 39,000 are now controlled by improved property owners. So if you go back in time, when we only had 13,500 improved lots, plus 4,400 that were owned by improved, unimproved owned by improved lot owners. So you're going approximately from 18,000 out of 39,000 controlled by those who live here to 22,500. So um, it, it's, it's definitely a shift in, in control. Uh, so my compliments to the team uh, for an outstanding job. It is a day in, day out job. It's, uh, it's been a seven year journey. Um, we met several years ago. We had a, a nice luncheon and at that time we were just under 8% and really the impression of everybody at that time was, eh, I don't think we can get any lower. At some point you can't, you know, it's like golf. You can only go so low um, uh, and uh, wow they've exceeded expectations at 4.5%. So uh, compliments to, to everybody. And, uh, so we're gonna turn this over uh, and do the celebrating success that relates to their outstanding job. Yep. Um, I'd like to invite, Roxy Goins isn't here tonight, but um, she's part of the team. So I'd like to invite Lori Adair, Robin Jackson, and Cindy Francesco to come up. Is Cindy here? Cindy's not here as well. Okay. Oh, on a cruise. That's much more exciting. Yeah, to be there. Uh, come, uh, they are so great. <laughs> I, know, I know Tom threw a lot of numbers at you, but it's really hard to overstate um, the impact to the bottom line that this team has has done over the last several years so it's it's great to have you here to recognize you publicly for the hard work that you do and Tom said it's a day-to-day day -day job every day on the phones uh, making calls and talking to members who sometimes aren't the most pleasant people to deal with but we appreciate your efforts for that um, I don't remember who it was on the legal team, maybe you remember Lori, but there was someone that had the, um, the idea, hey, when we're doing these online auctions and these foreclosures, why don't we send a letter to the, to the adjacent lot owners, whether they own a house or whether it's just a vacant lot, why don't we send letters to those people? And Tom mentioned that, that number of um, improved property owners who also own an adjacent lot has increased significantly over the years, and that was someone on the legal departments um, probably Roxy I, I don't know who to give the credit to but um, just another great idea from from this team of uh, okay how can we think outside the box to, to create a, a better uh, improvement on collections but Roxy and Lori from the legal department and Robin and Cindy from the accounting department have shown exemplary work in collections as reflected in the recent report on non-performing lots as a result of their continued efforts to help the POA's members remain current on the payment of assessments, there are now fewer than 4.5% of the POA's lots that are in arrears. The industry average is over 20% delinquency. We would like to recognize their efforts and success. So thank you very much, ladies, for your, for your efforts. Can we have a, a certificate and a, and a gift for you? Okay. Thank you. Do you want to take Cindy's? Um, you know what? I think I might let Beth do it. Okay. Yeah, I will do that. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, next on our agenda is the approval of minutes. Uh, Jerry, one more. Yeah. Oh, one more. Okay, I'm sorry. Push up. There you go. All right. Uh, we have one more ce celebrating success. Let me come around <laughs> and grab my glasses. <laughs> so I'd like for Tara Gordon to come up. So Tara's in the accounting department, 
Um, she works with accounts payable, and she's actually worked with accounts payable for many years, even before joining the POA. But um, this year I asked her if she would be interested in uh, taking a course with the Institute of Finance and Management and um, doing the accounts payable specialist certification. And uh, she said she was willing, because even though she's done it for many years, she recognizes there's always things to learn. Um, the course has approximately 16 learning hours, including an online textbook, video, practice quizzes, and a 100 question final exam. We won't ask her what her score was, but she passed. <laughs> so she is now has that specialist certification, and I appreciate her extra work on top of her normal day-to-day -day duties uh, to do that. Uh, the course studies internal controls, tax and regulatory, vendor master file, invoices, payments, travel and entertainment, technology, and automation. So she's really smart now. <laughs> So, thank you, Tara. I appreciate it. That's it. Okay. Okay. Um, I failed to mention earlier that uh, David Brandenburg is, is at not here, but JB Portello has his proxy. Okay. Okay, the approval for minutes, March 23rd. Do I have a vote to approve the minutes from? So moved. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. April twentieth, board session. Works the regular work session. I mean the board's work session. Do I have a vote to approve those minutes? Okay, Jan and, and Mike. Okay, all those in favor of approving those? I have a comment. Okay. Um, it didn't include the discussion that we had regarding the bylaws. Right. Okay. 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 It didn't include the discussion we had regarding the bylaws. Um, I guess it is in the video. Is that sufficient? Um, I would think it, it is. Probably should should probably should have been mentioned in the in the minutes. So we'll we'll update the minutes to reflect that discussion. Okay. So, so be as, as, amended. as amended, approve it as amended. Jan, do you want to re-motion uh, approve the minutes as amended? Uh, I move that we approve the minutes as amended, <coughs> as pointed out uh, uh, previously. And Mike, second. do you want a second? Sure. Okay. All those uh, approving, say hi or raise your hand. Okay. Okay. Uh, we had a, uh, during April 13th meeting, we had an uh, executive session. The board voted to uphold a suspension of a member's privileges. The vote was six to one. Director Sims opposing. Uh, Director Gaines and Fostick are, were absent from the executive session. Okay. And, uh, moving on to the joint advisory committee reports. And Jeff. We're going to go out of work as uh, Jeff has to get going. Yes, thank you. Good <laughs> evening, everybody. Uh, April 12th, we held our golf jack meeting. Uh, Keith Ems informed the committee uh, that at best we'll get the C six tee box here at Country Club back in August, maybe, due to the delay in construction on the 340 bridge. Um, he also talked about at Scottsdale some of the strategies that are they're evolving with their tarps and going to try to maybe even double up tarps with some straw in between to help protect those greens even better next year. Uh, Daryl gave course rounds reports. And overall, the rounds were down for the month of March year over year, but he also noted that March was cold and wet, and mm -hmm. the range buckets were up for about 1,500 rounds. Or buckets usage so everybody was doing that instead of trying to trying to play golf in the rain uh, the new cart tags have been installed they have a QR code on them that links you to uh, the today's play uh, web page so that way it's carts on path or 90 degree or whatever we're doing hopefully people will, will use that it's another step forward helping to educate and inform players about the etiquette as well as daily course rules uh, Daryl Muldoon is also participating in a program called the PGA Hope, and it's sponsored by the PGA. 
he and another uh, POA member were integral in getting this program expanded to Northwest Arkansas. The program is designed to teach <clears throat> disabled veterans the game of golf and, and how to get around some of their physical handicaps that they have. And uh, his report was that most of them seemed to really, really enjoy it. Uh, the Shot in the Dark tournament was a huge success. Uh, we raised over $4,000 to help the local high school golf programs. Uh, I'd like to once again thank, thank Alex Sanderford, uh, him and the rest of the team at Highlands. Without all their hard work and effort, this wouldn't be possible. Uh, they're there late, late at night to get that thing finished up. Uh, the last thing that we had was Operation 360 is underway, and the spots are filling up fast if they're not already gone, if anybody's interested to, to get signed okay. up. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, get back in uh, recreation. Good evening. The recreation meeting took place on April the 10th. Uh, all the amenities were reported in good condition. Keep in mind, however, some were um, reviewed right after those really bad storms at the end of March. And like everybody else around here, they took it hard. So the staff was pretty busy, I'm sure. Uh, at Metfield, I want to call out Hayden. Uh, so I reviewed Metfield last month, and it was my first time ever in that facility. And my hand was not even off the doorknob. And she greeted me. She didn't recognize me. She showed me all around. She told me, I, amazing. She absolutely represents the POA very well and needs to be complimented. At Branchwood, someone being, not anybody that works here, built a small wooden bridge to cross over the creek, I'm assuming while they're playing disc golf, but they're using tree branches to support it, which is not gonna support it, so that's gonna have to be addressed. Over at Loch Lomond, oh my gosh, the creek overran so much from that storm that mud, rocks, tree trunks were all the way up to the softball field. It was crazy. And if you've never been out there, that's a long way. At Blowing Springs, a recommendation was made to add a bike rack near the restrooms. The Gear Garden's very busy and a lot of people were laying their bikes around. So, And finally, over at the Reardon Complex, somehow the basketball net has been ripped and would need to be replaced. From the staff reports, Rick mentioned that the water has been turned on at the dog park over at Loch Lomond and the new batter box has been installed. John told us that the youth tournament was very well attended. Gun ranges combined are up 25% year over year with the main driver being trap and ski. And finally, Jessica informed us that we lost you all lost a shade at the Metfield pool due to the wind in those storms, which will be um, replaced. And the big news was the Easter egg hunt was huge. Fantastic turnout, lots of fun. She showed lots of great pictures. Really good event for the community. Our next meeting will be May the 8th. Any questions? No. All right, thank well, you. Thank Have you. you. Uh, the report from the Lakes Committee. Uh, the Lakes Committee voted to approve uh, a drawdown on Lake Windsor beginning the fall of 23. This is within the normal cycle of lake drawdowns we've done historically. Uh, the Lakes Committee uh, interviewed uh, 15 potential candidates to serve on the committee and selected three. Uh, they are Scott Hawes, Robert Montgomery, and Kevin Adelson. In addition, they have two members uh, of the committee that are up for another term on the committee, and that includes Carol Phillips and Ross Gurner. Spring electrofishing has begun on all BV lakes. Uh, the open house uh, at the new aquaculture ponds was held on April 15th, and we had approximately 150 in attendance. Well done. Okay. Uh, that brings us to the Preliminary financial report. Me, you? I can get it. Thank you. <laughs> glasses on, glasses off. <laughs> All right, for the March uh, financial report, I'll start with the consolidated. Uh, Year-to-date numbers, this is POA and water combined. So uh, revenue of 8,359,000 
is our year to date consolidated number, which is ahead of budget of 8175000 it's behind prior year, however, uh, in February of last year, we sold the cell tower lease rights of 911,000, so if you were to take that off of there, we would be ahead of the prior year. Uh, expenses year-to-date consolidated is 6,344,000, or yeah, compared to budget of 6,657,000. Um, so we're under budget and ahead of last year. Uh, inflation hadn't really kicked in this time last year and uh, the wage adjustments hadn't hit yet. So EBITDA of 944000 is ahead of budget of 628000 and you can see way behind prior year for those reasons I've just mentioned. Activity cards is up from last year, uh, 120, is that 121,113. Um, all the restaurants are ahead of budget. Uh, BV Bar and Grill is 467 compared to last year. Lake Point is 162 compared to last year of 154, and Highlands is 172 compared to last year of 38, I'm sorry, 126. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get new contacts. <laughs> um, boat registrations is slightly down um, from last year, just a little bit, by 6,000. Uh, Tanyard Creek has really taken off in that it's almost doubled its revenue, 9,000 versus 5,000. Uh, total EBITDA consolidated is ahead of budget by 571,000. Um, you can see some of the departments that have contributed to that positive variance. Um, you'll notice that several of them are related to outdoor activities. So as the weather gets warmer, we expect that to kind of level off. Um, marketing, information technology, member services, golf maintenance, those are not revenue producing departments and so theirs is just a matter of timing of expenses of when they've been able to get things in versus budgeted. For the POA only, revenues compared to budget um, was 46,000 better than budget in March and 221,000 year to date. Lottery sales was 80,000 in March. Food sales was 43,000 better than budget. Income on investments was 26,000. Uh, golf annual fees came in 22,000 under budget, as well as boat registration fees and RV storage fees were 11,000 under budget. Looking at the chart at the bottom left, you'll see that the green line is actual revenues and was ahead of budget for every month so far. Um, and as I explained earlier, the cell tower lease in 2022 in February, you can see the impact on that. But again, we would be beating uh, ahead of that if it wasn't for that. And the dip in February is, is normal for the POA as for weather and uh, activities. Uh, expenses were better than budget by 166,000 in March and 444,000 year to date. Contributing to that was um, grounds maintenance and repair and golf maintenance was 35,000 better than budget. Recreation was 21,000 better than budget. Bad debt expense was 20,000 better than budget. And we did have a Trafalgar legal expense of 14,000 in there. So again, looking at the chart at the bottom right, um, actual expenses is lower than budget for every month during 2023 so far and higher than last year due to that inflation that we've discussed. Looking at water only, uh, the water sales um, was higher in January and has dropped off a little bit in February and March. Charlie tells me that this is related to the wet weather we've had and that impacts water sales. Um, expenses and cost of goods sold has been pretty steady. 
Looking at March, the revenue was 780,000, which was 26,000 less than budget and 63,000 less than last year. Um, water sales was the culprit of that, 32,000 uh, worse than budget, but new service connections and capital buy-in fees were better than budget. EBITDA was 159,000, which was 125,000 worse than budget and 113,000 worse than last year. Um, we actually ahead of budget on water distribution equipment. We're worse than budget by 70,000 on water meter supplies, but they are advanced buying um, in anticipation of the demand and um, ahead of the, what was budgeted. COGS is 42,000 worse than budget and street maintenance supplies is 7,000 worse than budget. So kind of wrapping it all up in a bow, um, the POA has achieved 24% of their annual budget for 2023 for the quarter, so that's right on target. Um, and they are 87% at last year due to that cell tower sale. Water is 22% of their annual revenue budget for 2023 and 102% of last year's Q1. Expense-wise, the POA is 22% of their annual budget and 116% compared to last year. And water is 27% of their annual budget for 2023 compared to 104, and 114% of last year. The cash position remains strong. I, this is cash and investments, I should say. Um, it's 10.4 million. A million of that is set aside for water reserves, uh, 777,000 set aside POA reserves, um, but it, the cash flow is looking good and strong. And last but not least, here's the one pager. You can see um, the departments that are individually better than budget or worse than budget. I'm not gonna read through all those. We've talked about a lot of them. Um, the general income we didn't really talk about, but that was related to investment, the income on investments and uh, rebate on purchasing cards. Um, so it was ahead of budget. And um, legal, I think is, um, Doug's struggling to get those lot sales. <laughs> but he'll get there. <laughs> um, Month end borrowing, um, the POAs, the loan with the water is 2.2 million, and uh, the Reardon loan is at 2.4 million, um, and that's the cash. So I won't go through all those numbers. Um, they're all in your packet, if you, and uh, will be available online if anybody has any questions. Any questions? I just want to make a comment on yeah. your first page about Highlands, how it's, um, four times better this year than last year on the Highlands Pub, and that just kudos to them working on the menu with the pizza and the mm -hmm. night. I just think that's fantastic. Yeah, all the restaurants are well ahead of last year. Doing well. Hey, Beth. Yes. Have we always, well, I guess we didn't last year. Is the million dollar reserve in the water something new? Uh, um, yes, that is something that Tom has requested that we start setting aside in advance of the water tower um, that we've... It's actually the board that requested that. Oh, I'm sorry. It was via Tom to me. <laughs> it, it, was, it was part of the uh, long-range plan that the board approved that they wanted a million dollars set aside. There you go. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, uh, yes. Okay, on... Uh, open forum. Do we have any? Oops, we sorry. have nobody? Uh, we had no emails and nobody here to speak. Everybody left. Okay. okay. Uh, if you jump forward uh, to page 68 on your board packet... Uh, you'll see that we have a request uh, on uh, our water capital uh, water capital project. Uh, we were unable to get three bids. This is very specialized. It's boring underneath a road. Uh, so we are requesting a three bid waiver. 
this is this project at uh, Highlands in Edmonton. Okay, do we have a suggested motion for the three bid, three bid waiver? I make a motion granting a three bid waiver for the capital water line project at Highlands in Edmonton due to the high demand for boring contractors in the area. And that's B O R I N G, right? Okay. Boring. It could be boring. Second, <laughs> second Jason. <laughs> okay, all those in favor? Raise your hand. Okay, 100%. Okay. On page 69 of your board packet, uh, this is for Tanya Creek Practice Center. Uh, as part of the 23 budget, we uh, hired an architect to work on the uh, building itself. Uh, this is, uh, this request is for the civil engineer, the survey work, uh, the plan development, the permitting, and the architect, uh, the golf course architect for the practice facility immediately around uh, that building. This will allow us to get to a point where we can go out to bid uh, and get a firm estimate as opposed to a guesstimate for the board on how much the entire project will cost. We're requesting $53,000 for all this. We've combined everything together into, into one. Okay. Did I hear a motion? I'll make a motion approving expenditure of $53,000 for civil engineering and golf course architectural work for the Tanyard Creek Practice Center project. Okay, second. Okay, Jackie. Okay, all those in favor? Unanimous. There are no opposed. Okay. Uh, next on the okay. agenda was the uh, non performing lots report, which we already gave. Uh, after that, on page 72 of your board packet, uh, just an update regarding the rezoning project. Uh, uh, earlier this month, we had three additional um, rezoning applications approved. Uh, so uh, we're now at, uh, what is that, uh, 13 that have been approved. We have eight coming up in the month of May. Uh, so uh, maybe in June or July we will be done with the project and we'll have uh, all 23, 24 of these uh, rezoned. After that, the only rezoning uh, one that we'll have to do is for the west side water tower. Uh, that uh, on the land that we're purchasing for Cooper, we haven't acquired that yet and it will be through the city of Gravit, so we'll have to go through an education process on how they do rezoning. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to. Could, Tom, could you real quick Cliff Notes version of why we're doing this? I've seen a little bit of conversation around um, on the yeah, question. So but. a lot of these parcels, so going back into time, uh, back in 17, and, I, and I've spoken with people that were actually um, uh, part of the uh, city that was making the decision at that time is they they had limited amount of time to get all this done as we were forming the the, the city of Bella Vista and they arbitrarily assigned in most cases P1 to all um, Bella Vista POA land and P1 is pr for preserve so this building you know where we have a restaurant, a pro shop, a bar, offices, was listed as P1, which really makes no sense at all. Uh, we had some that were listed as R1 residential. Reardon Hall was, an R, was R1 residential. Just doesn't make any sense. It was just mistakes that were done in, 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 in haste at that time. And so we're going through and we're trying to match the historical and current use of the building with the zoning. And what this will allow us to do is down the road, let's say, um, let's say we have a maintenance facility that needs to expand. Well, if it's R1, that's going to be really hard for that building to be expanded because it's R1 residential or P1, which is preserve. By having it C1, in many cases, it will allow us to more easily expand it and really reflect what we're doing there. It's not, you know. Reardon Hall is clearly not residential. It doesn't make any sense. So we're trying to fix this all. I think it's causing some concern since we're doing so many at one time. Um, we're just trying to fix it. And, and so uh, we're not trying to do anything nefarious. Um, 
people have asked me, are we going to put in a uh, dollar general? No. Or are we going to sell the land? No. Remember, if we try and sell land, and we're not trying to do that, it requires a vote of the entire membership. On top of that, a lot of this common property, pretty much all of it, has deed restrictions on it, which the, these properties can only be used for recreational purposes only. So while we're not looking to sell this land, if we did sell this land, the deed restriction goes with that. So you couldn't put in a Dollar General or anything crazy like that. We're not looking at it. Someone asked me the other day if we're going to put in a Home Depot. Um, <laughs> I'd love to have a Home Depot right next door to my house because I go there all the time. But that's not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to match the historical and current use of these facilities so that down the road, if we need to repair and do a massive repair to a building or expand it in some way, that we can do things uh, much more efficiently. Thank you. Uh, next, on page 74 of your board packet, you okay that I'm just jumping yeah. in. Um, uh, you'll see the recommendations for the Lakes Committee. Uh, we referenced these earlier when we were going over the meeting notes. You'll see three new members and two returning members. Full disclosure, uh, Mr. Ross Gurner is my uh, neighbor. Can't select your relatives or neighbors. <laughs> Ross and I get along very well, but I, you know, got to take every opportunity to give him a jab. But uh, no comment. <laughs> uh, this is uh, recommended by the Lakes Committee. Okay, uh, we we need to get a motion to affirm them. So uh, we'll start with Rob Montgomery. Make a motion to have Rob Montgomery be affirmed to the Lakes Committee. Any discussion or anything we want to talk over, Jan? I make a motion affirming the nomination of Rob Montgomery to the Lakes Committee. All right, second. JB. Okay. All those in favor? Ah. Okay. I'll make a motion to the nomination of Okay, second. Second. Okay, Jason. Okay, all those in favor? Okay. All right, what about Scott Halls? I make a motion affirming the nomination of Scott Halls mm -hmm. to the Lakes Committee. Second. Thank you. Hey, all those in favor? Okay, okay and then uh, we have uh, Carol Phillips returning. We need a motion for her to returning. I'll make it. I make a motion affirming the nomination of Carol Phillips to the Lakes Committee. Second. Jackie, I mean Sandy. Okay, all those in favor? Okay, uh, Ross, Gurner. Oh, please let me do this. <laughs> I make a motion affirming the nomination of Mr. Ross Gurner, a.k.a. Little Buddy, to the Lakes Committee. <laughs> uh, second. Okay. Jan? Jan. Jan. Okay. Jackie? Okay. Okay, all those in favor of? All right. All right. The next item on our agenda is the bylaw readings. And the <laughs> required readings for the first of two vote board readings. Tom, I'm going to turn it over to you. On page, page 75 of your board packet uh, is uh, the memo regarding the bylaws and the memo regarding uh, policy 1.00 definitions. Let's do the easier one uh, definitions first. Uh, the committee was going through and making modifications and improvements and upgrades to uh, all of the policies and we decided to do the definitions at the very end in case any of the changes that were made would impact the definitions. Um, there's only a few slight changes to the definitions so that's what we're, why we're asking for this to be approved for the first reading. With regards to the bylaws, uh, quite a number of changes. Uh, for those at home, uh, if you have not watched the most recent uh, Rules and Regulations Committee, uh, that is available on the POA's website. Uh, so I encourage you to view that. Uh, we can, at this time, go into much more detail, uh, although the board at this point has seen it multiple times. It's at your discretion. At our work session, Sandy pointed out a uh, inconsistency regarding officers, and we corrected that. 
Okay. It is riveting content, so it's, it's <laughs> people <laughs> are in search. Really you know, I recommend it highly. I would say. Okay. Well, if, if I hear no no other comment on it, then we'll just go to the motions. Correct. Okay. Uh, so, anybody want to do the one for the bylaws? Okay. Sure. Why not? I make a motion approving the changes to the bylaws. This is the first of two required readings. And a second. Jan? Hey, I mean, Sims? Okay. Okay, all those in favor? Okay, the. Uh, any opposed? Any opposed? I had my hand up. You did? I didn't see you. I'm sorry. Did so it was, it was 9 0. 9 0. <laughs> okay, the. Uh, Are you surprised? <laughs> <laughs> any uh, emotion? Well, just That's, to be clear, I am still opposed to removing things that are in the declaration, but they're still in the declaration. Okay. Okay, uh, the uh, need a motion for the uh, policy 1.0 definitions. Approval for that? Sure. I make a motion approving the changes to policy 1.0 definitions. This is the first of two required readings. Second? Jack, uh, Jan? Sandy? Need to look up quicker. Okay, all those in favor? Okay, 100%. Yes. Yeah. You're done? Okay. Unless anybody has anything else to bring up, that brings us to the closing. Uh, Tom, do you want to give a little update for how well the weekend was for the hospitality crew for the recording for, for posterity's sake? Talk about um, Gear Garden. Gear Garden. Uh, so on a normal uh, Saturday, uh, we'll do, say, $1,000. Uh, in revenue, so over a weekend we might do uh, over a three-day weekend we might do three thousand uh, dollars for the grand opening. Uh, we had bands uh, in uh, there for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and we brought in seventeen thousand five hundred uh, seven hundred Pioneer Cup sold, uh, which is crazy high number. Um, and uh, it was a great time. It was just an awful around great time. Um, uh, uh, lines were long, but people were patient and, and uh, chatting with people in front of them and behind them and having just a good old time. Lots of kids, lots of dogs. Um, it was just a real huge success. Uh, very proud of the F and B team uh, for what they're what they've been able to accomplish. Uh, and you know, earlier it was referenced. Uh, trivia night, uh, and we got a whole host of ad additional ideas that we're working on uh, because our membership loves events, uh, and uh, we want to offer more to the membership. Um, if, you, if you go back a couple of years and compare the number of events that we have these days, we have a lot, and we have a lot more coming coming your way. So, um, but uh, the Gear Garden, outstanding success, a lot of fun. Hey, Tom, I want to give a shout out to more than just the hospitality team because it's, it's what's been really neat about Bowling Springs Evolution is how many people go into making that place what it is from the maintenance of the grounds to the you know, maintenance of the, the entire facility from Jones' team mm -hmm. to how the trails come together and how they've evolved to the construction of the greenway to you guys redoing the concrete benches to the new mulching to the bearing of the power to the removal of the poles to the invasive species it's prepped it all for really this moment is we've hit it the hardest we've ever done it over there and so it's, yeah. it's really been that perfect bill where we kind of conceived it and it's happened it's taken five years but now it is a, an earner well we're we're three years in uh and um uh, i want to remind everybody uh we actually had a net return on our complete investment in the first two months when we opened it three years ago. Uh, so it's really turning into just a, a really good, uh, a good money maker, a good place to, to have community and have a lot of fun. And Tom, it, not only with the gear garden, 
is it popular with the, the biking community, which it's set up for, but uh, I'm pretty well connected with the RV community, uh, who sometimes are the same people, but sometimes are not. Uh, and uh, it's just a wonderful amenity and addition to the RV park, uh, and has been mentioned uh, in different RV forums and things like that. So uh, it's just hitting on all levels. So. Yeah, we were extremely busy at the RV park this last weekend, um, at the primitive camping, at the tiny cabins, um, everything was clicking. Everything was clicking. And, and I appreciate, Mike, you're completely right. It's a team effort on all fronts. Um, and so it's really, really working out very nicely and, and people are really enjoying it. And I think I had a friend who wanted to reserve an RV and I think if Spot, if I have read correctly that maybe sometime in the future, that will also be online instead absolutely. of by phone calls. Yes, so that absolutely. would be much more progressive. Absolutely. That's <laughs> 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 the facts. <laughs> One other comment. Do you happen to know the voting results for the, the percentage? Uh, we were at uh, nine, like 17 nine. and okay. change. Um, so it looks like we'll wind up. Uh, you know, we usually get between 24 and 28 percent on uh, um, uh, board member elections, so we're right on track to get between 24 and 28 percent. Now, and just so everybody is aware, anybody can see what the percentage is. Correct. Nobody can see what how it's going. I can't see how it's going. Nobody can. But anybody, if when you log in to vote, you can go down to the bottom. You can see how it's, uh, how the vote is going, the percentage. And if you keep, uh, if you hold on to your passcode, you can go back in. And that's what we do. You know, I I, I just go back in. I look at it. And, oh, we're at seventeen percent. And then we we you know know where we're at. So. Um, we don't know what's going. We don't know how the vote's going, other than it appears to be on track to be a similar amount of participation. Well, I hope sometime in the future we can celebrate success for moving the needle in that percentage to a higher level. It is uh, a sad reality that how many people don't take enough effort to do this very key action in the community that we all hold so near and dear. So, anybody who is possibly listening out there, please get out. And vote. Agreed. Do your homework. Vote. And if you don't vote, don't complain. <laughs> well, I have to say, there was some good music out there this weekend. Good time. Okay, uh, coming up, we're at Recreations. JSC meeting will be Monday, May 8th, 4 p.m. here in the boardroom. Uh, Lakes JSC meeting is Wednesday, May 10th at 2 p.m. here in the boardroom. Golf JAC meeting Wednesday, May 10th at 4 p.m. here in the boardroom. Rules and regulations meeting Thursday, May 11th at 1.30 in the boardroom. Uh, board of Directors GM meeting will be Thursday, May 11th at 2.30 p.m. in the boardroom. Annual meetings of members at election results will be Tuesday, May 16th at 6 p.m. Uh, board of Directors work session will be Thursday, May 18th at 9 a.m. And the regular next regular meeting will be Thursday, May 25th, 6 p.m. here in the boardroom. If there's no other comments, that will yes. Um, the annual meeting on on the 16th. Uh, I think when I went in to vote, it said it was going to be at Lake Point. This says in the boardroom. We're going to relocate it to here just because uh, two two reasons we probably won't have. Uh, at we're going to relocate it to here uh, because of uh, uh, attendance level and it's just easier to set it up. We'll have someone at that location to redirect them if they, if they come to the wrong place. Okay, it's good to know. Okay, well that will end the uh, regular meeting board session.